Gazan Saga Mutant Fighter, based on Gona Guy's manga of the same name for the Genesis, by the combined efforts of Victor Kai, Sega, and the ill fated Almanac, later Givro, circa 1993, otherwise known as Mazen Wars in Europe. Okay, whoa, 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 let's hold the transmission here. Before I kick things off as usual, I'd like to give the traditional shoutouts to the following organizations, individuals, etc. Brookline Interactive Group and Somerville Media Center, Deidre Fisher and Matt Porter from Welford, South Carolina, Taylor Copeland, Kim Tran, Erica Morricone, Katie Salmon from Jackals, Jamie Clock and Sarah Huber, Alex Derdarian, Liz Stapleton, Carly Lieberman, Sharon Shitnick, Judy and Gwen, Brittany McLean from Replayed, James Rolfe, Mike Matei and Kyle Justin from Cinema Massacre, Ian Bergeson, care of 16-bit heroes in the offseason from Merrimack, New Hampshire, not to mention his wife Katie and their two kids, Felix and Ramona, Autumn Lee Bales, aka Old School Gamer Mama from Gatlinburg, Tennessee, See, the Boston Open Screen team, that is Healy, Van Voorhees, and Atwood. The Word Local Film Festival team, or Will for short, obviously. Levine, Burke, and Associates. Fallon Lee O'Brien, DIY The Show, that is Lowry, Brack, Green Zeus Hall, Duvall, Johnston, Brow, Munoz, etc. Dave White and Joe Redifer from GameSack, Jules Carrazza from Gen Y Films, and his newly founded Goliath Post, 8-Bit Eric, Retro Gamer 3, Kinzilla, Kayla, aka Plumdrop 11, Bella from Los Angeles, aka Girl with Yellow Spoon, Mount Vernon Kid, Chavez Slovakia, Kelvin Dyson from Leeds, England, Riley Sky 100, Tomashi Hiroka, Starlab Studios, and before I go any further, since the convention that I'm about to mention is right around the corner, I am officially declaring this a special PAX East 2019 review. Kind of got a nice ring to it, don't you think? Anyways, cockiness aside, these out of our system, onto the game's main premise. <laughs> Set in 1999, literally two decades ago, oh and take note, this is from 93, okay? Our beloved Earth has been assaulted and conquered by a ruthless army of gigantic bio-beast mutants known as the Steel Mask Force, under the leadership of the nefarious God Kaiser Hell, originally Dr. Hell in the manga. By doing so, most of the planet's ecosystem has been polluted to absolute shit, and the majority of the survivors retreated to the underground areas in utter fear of these bio-beast bastards. Amongst them, the recently deceased, or late if you will, Dr. Kabuto, nope, nothing to do with Pokemon, period, has broken further ground in creating a special kind of armor, Mazinger Z, an extraordinary shell made up of the super spiritual materia Z that provides the wearer with godly and or demonic abilities depending on their inner will and spirit. Now his son, Koji, upon discovering and donning said celestial armor, intends to once and for all rid the Earth of the dreaded God Kaiser Hell Steel Mask Force, and won't rest until he fulfills that very decree. As far as gameplay, much more than a beat-em-up slash brawler hybrid, you're traversing through a specific country in its three areas, if more or less depending on which stage you're occupying, pursuing your target Steel Mask Bio-Beast Invader, while slaughtering the ever-loving Christ out of their endless mutant henchmen. These henchmen include all sorts of soldiers, warriors, some with two claws on their arms, masked perpetrators with claws hidden under gowns, armadillo-like mutants, even those toting flamethrowers, hovering in jet cruisers, opposite gender fighters, etc. I can go on for a week, if quite possibly longer. Regarding the control setup, the D-pad lets Mazinger Z migrate horizontally, vertically, and diagonally of his own free will, even dash upon tapping left or right twice, and in true Streets of Rage 2 fashion, A, B, and C lets him pull off a multi-slash special which depletes a portion of your vitality, like in most fucking beat-em-ups, perform a normal slash attack, and jump individually, and these commands CANNOT be swapped in the options area beforehand. Other techniques that Mazinger Z can perform include a post-dash strike via B after tapping left or right twice, a downward thrust akin to Zelda 2 via down and B simultaneously at the peak of your leap, an aerial kicker slash, same spiel except you have to tap just B at the peak of your leap, with the former being performed only by pushing left or right in tandem with B, and here are the two big game breakers, both an on-ground rapid sword slash and a mid-air 360 slash. On the penultimate, it's akin to Agile from X2, except minus the dashes, or E Honda or Joe Higashi from Street Fighter and Fatal Fury respectively, except with a sword, performed by tapping B rapidly, and on the latter, akin to Shikanda Forever Man, it's performed by dashing left or right and finally tapping C then B respectively. 
Regarding the items that you'll be nabbing within each stage, some more rare than others, you've got your two life chakra orbs, normal and super, both of which replenish your vitality and diminutive and ample amounts individually, and an invincibility statue which renders you immune to enemy attacks for a brief period of time. <coughs> Mario and Sonic looking at the ball of you. <coughs> Piles of gold dust and crystals which add extra points to your current score. To be exact, 1000 and 5000 points individually. And finally, a somewhat rare one up. Guess what the fuck that does? At certain points of each stage, you'll occasionally go up against your target Steel Mask Invader, both in diminutive human form and at approximately the same gigantic size as them. The latter of which takes place at the ass end of each stage following the third portion, with the final stage featuring what I like to call a rematch parade. Christ, Act Razor much? Should you get ravaged too much or inadvertently plummet into pits? To quote Martin Riggs, it's your ass, Cochise. Ditto if you overuse the earlier recounted multi slash special before inevitably falling victim to either of the former incidents. And the less I say about the occasional auto scrolling areas during which you have to keep hauling ass while evading and or defying every danger ahead, most notably Europe and New York, stages 3 and 4 singularly, the better. Getting to the end stage Bio Beast fights, the setting and framework shifts to a brawler style, resembling that of the infamous Ultraman for the Super NES and especially Power Rangers, oh and Super Godzilla, but with a different control scheme. With the obvious exception of the D-Pad, which works about the same way as in what I referenced, A lets Mazinger Z guard, or block if you will, its opponent's attack, while B and C allows it to attack and jump respectively like earlier. You can even block while in the air and perform other sword slashes while holding down said D-Pad. The roster of target bio beasts you'll be going up against are as follows Garada K7 in Tokyo, Slughead in India, Dino Beast in Europe, Buster Claw in New York, aka the Big Apple, Negative Mazinger, who's nothing more or less than a silver doppelganger of your main hero, in Egypt of all places no less. And remember that rematch parade I was talking about? Apart from facing the first fucking four yet the hell again, Negative Mazinger returns with a burgundy orange hue, following which the end all be all inevitable final altercation with Hell Mazinger ensues. With the exception of Garada K7 and Slughead, both of whom are fairly formidable creatures, but ultimately turn out to be invertebrate, wimpy ass fuckboys, as long as you're aware enough of how to handle yourself. Dino Beast and everyone else? Fucking hell's bells, man! They will uncontrollably piss and jizz all over your parade in more ways than one could possibly fathom. It's baffling beyond belief that they'll always block often, no matter how hard you battle. Not to mention they'll always retaliate more often than you'll react to them. Oh, and unless you're well versed with the patterns of these remaining adversaries, they'll more than guarantee that they'll have a Zord sized coffin erected in your name. So I'd watch my goddamn step against those douchey sons of bitches if I were you. <laughs> Sit and spin, you dingleberry! <laughs> Drown in your own excrement, nut licker! <laughs> Upon fiercely massacring the living piss out of your target bio beast, the next mission ensues during which the same formula repeats itself. Control wise, every button's responsive to Mazinger C's key physical capabilities as many might expect from an underrated hack and slash and brawler hybrid, despite their limited range, with maybe the exception of the boss confrontations in the auto scrolling sections, mostly due to relying on cheap and redundant, if unique at first, techniques to overcome every target in tandem with their arbitrarily derelict AI, and the likelihood of recurring on screen suicides resulting from lack of top notch focus and attention, respectively. Notwithstanding the slew of obvious inconveniences, however, the gameplay framework's far from a raging buzzkill to acclimatize oneself with, apart from what I've already deliberated. Regarding Mazen Saga's challenge, at this juncture, I see no point in repeating myself regarding the boss confrontation procedures, as long as, yet again, you're well aware of their patterns, despite being unnecessarily deprived of your extra techniques in giant form. <laughs> Other than that, both the main hack and slash and auto scrolling sections are a mixed bag in terms of how you're struggling to handle yourself against every motherfucking adversary, including but not limited to the much simpler henchmen no less, especially those that randomly block a lot and or speed bump in your path. Seriously, they will all make you their whorish sex slave and force you to gargle copious amounts of their own semen for hours on end if you're not prepared and dead on, ditto for the latter type portions, during which you have to restart every goddamn time if you perish. Though there is a surprising change of pace applied, about which I have no complaints whatsoever. Paraphrasing Filthy Frank, those combined with the previously deliberated awkward ass boss altercations are so much cancer that you can feel the tumors growing on your back weighing down heavy on you, and it's not okay! Starting out with any amount between 3 to 5 lives and continues, however, regardless of which difficulty mode you experiment with, and more of which are awarded, the lives of course, if you defeat any and or all bosses without enduring any heavy damage whatsoever, don't get too discouraged if you happen to be screwed in any tough situation, as the variety and strategy and attrition are boundless and fair, taking into consideration everything I've been shooting my goddamn K-Call off so far, and then some.
As far as graphics go, for yet another hidden gem from more than one quarter of a century ago, while the overall flair and presentation isn't much to go apeshit over even today, everything's far from an absolute utter eyesore. The main character Koji Kabuto, in his titular trademark armor, as opposed to the original 70s interpretation by Nagai himself, and his gargantuan, hodgepodge cast of opposing hostile parties are recreated spot-on from their source material, exhibiting the former's heroic physique while applying almost the same concerning the latter's malicious yet short-sighted intent. The layouts of every country are meticulous and in every bit as rich in detail as, say, the Garner family from the Hangover trilogy, complete with parallax scrolling and giving off something of an almost 3D Jim Power-esque vibe, notwithstanding how redundant they appear to be, as are the size-varied animations of not only the aforementioned Mazinger Z, but all the endless adversaries it confronts, thus excruciatingly shitting on the likes of Taito's Gladiator, I might add. <laughs> Music and sound-wise, orchestrated by Kazuo Sawa of various Technos Japan classics including Renegade, otherwise distributed in the US by Taito, River City Ransom, Super Dodgeball, Crash and the Boys Street Challenge and others, and especially The Battle of Olympus by Broderbund, Imagineer, and Infinity, Populous 1 and 2 by Imagineer, based on the ill-fated Bullfrog Interactive's originals, and totally rad by the ill-fated Jalico, amongst various other titles. While many might argue that the correlating themes are enough to look the other way, and they leave but a fucking pantload to be desired, forgive my double standards in advance, I might just have to go on record expressing otherwise. There's something of a heavy and intense techno vibe in these themes, reminiscent of Biohazard Battle, another previously reviewed Genesis Faith and Oddity of mine, released not long before, which I've been more than getting well accustomed to even before producing this review. Redundant, yes, but an all-around thriller no matter how goddamn old they get. The sound effects, including the voice samples of various enemies upon their moments of defeat, and especially Mazinger itself, not to mention the YES quote heard upon its imminent triumph over every end boss, can also be redundant as Christ Harry nuts, but are definitely far from what I like to call the distant galaxy of irapy ignominy. And take note of my top 8 songs shown here. Replayability-wise, despite being only limited to a one-player-only campaign, and I know what everyone's thinking, WHERE'S THE CO-OP?! WHERE ARE THE VERSUS BATTLE ROUNDS?! <laughs> like I give a rat's ass. As well as the half-assed yet submissive gameplay and offensive strategy types of features, and the hair-tearing, controller-bashing difficulty surrounding them, even if you're not much of a mech otaku like yours truly, Gundam Dunbine Voltom's MD guys looking at the four of you. Mazen Saga Mutant Fighter is definitely worth replaying and mastering time and time again, no matter which mood you're in. Then again, you might require a half-month hiatus in between each attempt. And did I somehow forget to mention... Patience? <laughs> so, what's my final verdict? I, in full honesty, wish there was more to emphasize about this hidden gem that hasn't already been done so to fucking death. Regardless of your familiarity with the source material, and looking past virtually every common flaw this game carries, I don't see any particular reason to abandon, let alone overlook Mazen Saga. Therefore, I'd get my ass out there and track this down ASAP, or when the grosses lower themselves accordingly. Your choice. A loose copy should run you 35 bucks, if less, and a complete copy should run you slightly less than, if maybe close to, a mind-blowing 150 bucks. And let me assure you, there is, was, and will definitely be no shame in indulging yourself in what a guy celestial gladiator has to offer that puts even the likes of Cloud, Squalls, and Dane and Titus to absolute shame. Anyhow, until then, this is the one and only Hardcore Retro God triumphantly signing off. <laughs>